so negotiating is one of your sports in the sort of decathlon of of deal making that uh, is the craft one of the crafts you've mastered this is going to seem like a lazy question but i'm going to ask because it'll be on the mind of a lot of people listening for someone who wanted to become a skilled negotiator would you have any recommendations in terms of resources approaches common beliefs that are actually very unhelpful anything at all for somebody who wants to develop their ability to negotiate well of course and it's probably the opposite of what people believe or instinctively would do which is usually the answer by the way <laughs> so i would say like 90 percent of the time everyone focuses on what is important to them and what we or what you say it's irrelevant all that matters is how it lands to the other person it's in life in order to understand how something will land to the other person you have to meet them where they are you have to put yourself in their shoes once you put yourself in someone else's shoes then you don't have to do what they say in a negotiation but you have to at least start with that understanding and then go back to what's most important to you from there. And then you have a fair understanding of what that negotiation is going to look like. But if you just start like throwing your words against the wall, it's never going to end well. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be very frustrated and there'll be temper tantrums and so on. I, I kind of make it, the best analogy I can think of is when you're in a huddle about to throw a pass in a football game and you have figured out you're going to throw a post pattern in the huddle and you've thought about it in that huddle. If you, you know, say how play goes and you throw the post pattern play, but you haven't looked at actually what happened in the field and the receiver had to go in a different direction. You need to meet that receiver where they are. Your post pattern play is irrelevant. It's only relevant to your formation at the beginning, but it's not relevant to actually where the ball is going to go in the end. Because what happened on the field is much more important. So, like, you have to do the preparation work and have to have a sense of what you think is proper and right from your perspective. But you also have to understand what will be the scenarios that will be important to them. And then the middle ground approach is too often used. It's not that. It's just starting from understanding both vantage points. It's the same kind of skill set as saying, before I put a buy on something, I have to also reject the sell. You know, you have to um, be comfortable in an unknown position before you can adequately argue for your, for what's important to you. And then in a trusted relationship, which is the only way to negotiate with a trusted relationship, you're going to get down to things that are really important and things that are not really that important. And to be able to be comfortable saying that, like, um, okay, if I listed these three things, please rank in order for me what's most important to you and what you really don't need that would give me a little bit more room to come back to you something that i think we could work with Hmm. because that shows that you'll be willing to give up something to get something which is obviously hallmarked any transaction now that's a good negotiation there are tactics above that so sometimes in order to get to someone that you need you may ask for things that you don't really want just to settle back in to something that is a discount to that that you only would do that if if you feel like the other person is doing the same thing. So it all goes back to trust. And that trust is not about one person trusting another. It's at different phases of the negotiation that trust picks up. So at the beginning of a negotiation, it may be less trustworthy than at the end when things are really coming to the finish line, when you can see the light of day, that things start to pick up towards the trust. So you have to see kind of when you can play those different uh, tactics. But at the end of the day, it's kind of putting your, seeing people where they are, I think is really, really important without giving up what you really need. Let's explore that a bit. So seeing people where they are, you gave the football metaphor. Could you describe an actual deal situation or process? It could be real. It could be anonymized. It could be hypothetical. But just to walk us through a, a concrete case study of what that looks like knowing the other side uh, since you led with that 
in your answer. Could you perhaps just walk us through an example? All the deals that we work on that are public, company deals, end up being filed publicly mm-hmm. with the play-by-play of the deal. No one likes to read legal documents, right. but the fun part of the legal document is the play-by-play of the deal if people are interested in the step-by-step of how a deal works. Because while we're doing the deal, we're very aware of the fact that it will be filed publicly. Mm-hmm. So. It's not like you're pulling fast ones because it's going to be disclosed how you're doing what you're doing. So you have to be truthful. There's no concept of like lying in a deal because it will all be uncovered later if you want to be in the business the next day. (laughs) So that's called the proxy statement. And that one section is written up by lawyers that actually recount the deal. Did not know that. Yeah. So what I'm going to say is public information. You know, when we did the transaction of selling MGM Studios to Amazon, which is the only example of a content company being sold to a technology company to date, there was an impasse between the buyer and the seller that went on for a while. And the, the deal ended up being worth around $8.5 billion. But for months, Amazon would not go above $8 billion. And MGM and the owners of MGM said we were not selling below $9 billion hell or high water. And so we were at an $8 to $9 billion bid ask for months to the point where the deal could have gone away. Like a bit, uh, you know, one hand you're close, on the other hand, nothing's happening. So finally, the, the chairman of MGM, who was a really dear friend, you know, calls me and says, like, I'm ready to, like, what do you think? I'm ready to unlock this gap. And I knew Amazon very well enough to know that they were thinking, because this gap was going on for so long, that the owner of MGM and the chairman, in their mind, they were thinking, didn't really want to sell. So they were thinking that $9 billion was just basically saying, I don't really want to sell. Which I knew that was not to be the case. Mm-hmm. So. The owner and the chairman of MGM said to me, um, I give you my proxy to go in there and break the logjam. And so I did. When I went to call the Amazon executives, I said, okay, we're ready to negotiate now. They said, well, there's nothing to negotiate. You know, they're at $9 billion and you know, we're at $8 billion and we're not moving. I said, okay. And, he said, well, and they're not even really selling the company. I said, well, what if I told you that they were selling the company? He said, well, how would I know? I said, well, I'll, in good faith, speak on behalf of the chairman and give you a new offer that will yield a bit under the condition that you respond to me within 24 hours with a counteroffer that will get the ball rolling. So I get also the feedback back to the chairman that you're serious about dealing, meaning that if, if I can speak, for a principle, you have to speak also that you want to get something done, but I'm not going to move unless you're going to move, and I need to know that you're going to move. And that, that was trust, because they took a risk that I could represent the owners of MGM. And uh, they said, um, okay, what do you got? And I said, I think we should split the difference and go right to it, but it has to go fast, and you have to get back to me right away. And they did. And if they didn't, and in those 48 hours, there was a lot of emotion, you know, but they did get back and it moved very, very fast from there. 